Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Fly Tying with Bobby. Today I'm going to be tying the black stone fly. This is a nymph pattern and I'm going to be using black goose bites. I'm going to be using some pheasant tail for the legs. I'm going to be using some Spirit River nymph blend. I'm going to be using some latex body stretch for the body and also some, uh, some black boar hair that we have in our store. Uh, by the way, I'd like to put a plug in for our store, Winner's Hope Fly and River on eBay. Don't know if you can see that or not. Winner's Hope Fly and River on eBay. Uh, that's where we're selling our black boar hair. Some call it peccary. Uh, don't know where it got that name. But anyway, that's what I'm using today. And uh, I had a request from uh, one of my viewers. Sean wanted me to not skip the tying part of the fly and as I'm editing these videos down, um, sometimes uh, a lot of stuff goes wrong <laughs> during tying the fly. So uh, I guess today we're, we're, we're really kind of uh, winging it and we're going to put in the good with the bad. So if there's any bloopers, you'll have to excuse that. So uh, sometimes there's airplanes flying over. We live in a busy area here and dogs barking and the wind chimes and everything. So I, I try to edit that stuff out. and. I, I get the feeling sometimes you guys don't want to see me just wrapping around and around, but Sean wanted to see that, so uh, today this, this video is, is basically for Sean, one of my viewers out there, and, and again, I, I really appreciate that, Sean. I, I like that you're watching my videos and, and learning stuff here, so anyway, let's get started with this. First thing I'm going to do is just lay down a wrap, a base wrap here. See there? Stuff goes wrong already. I had to switch to my better glasses. Alrighty, so let's just cut that tag end of that thread off there. I'm going to be using a couple of different techniques here today that I'm going to show you guys and uh, some really cool stuff here. So first thing I'm going to do is, uh, I, I don't see a lot of guys do this. Um, when I'm laying down my goose bites, what I do down here is I I build up this little bulbous little thing with the, with the tying thread and I do believe that this is a technique that I learned from Arnie Gidlow in Montana, one of my mentors and a, a great fly fishing uh, guru of mine and I've learned a lot from him. So anyways, uh, I tie um, a nice little bulb right down there before I uh, go ahead and lay those bites in there. So now I'm going to take a couple of bites and I'm going to put them on there. And, and what that bulb does is, I think you probably already guessed, it helps them splay out. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead and tie those in. Now one of the things that I noticed about a lot of guys that are tying these flies is they're making these bites stick way, way out on this fly. And even before I tied this fly today here, I went and did a little research to make sure that I got it exactly right. I've tied this fly before but I did a little bit of research on it. I wanted to get this fly exactly perfect. So uh, so I looked at the length and, and I just noticed that a, a lot of guys that tie this fly are really putting it, yeah see there the bite broke so now I have to start over there. Um, I noticed a lot of guys are uh, putting these these bites way way out too far and, and I think that's uh, it's important to um, stick to the size and shape of these flies that we're tying. We're really trying to mimic the fly the best we can. So um, size, I think, on the, on the tail section here is, is very key. So I noticed that the, the bayet does not stick out all that far. So I'm going to really try to stick to the original length, which from what I noticed is about a quarter of an inch. Okay, so you can already see that that now that this this bite here is really starting to splay out here because of that bulb that I've tied there and it really helps keep it s sticking out so that's that's what we want so let me get the other one in here You really want to make sure that these bites stick right on the side of the fly and uh, and splay out. Okay, so now now I've got the bites in there, and and, and uh, I can either snip them off or tie them in. 
doesn't really matter. I think I'll just go ahead and snip those off right there because they're giving me a problem. And we'll just wrap that up with thread right there. Okay, now another thing that I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to I'm going to divide off my fly here. I'm going to decide at what point that I'm going to tie the body in. And I know that I want the abdomen to be, oh, maybe, uh, maybe halfway up this hook here. Definitely not two-thirds because by the time we get the legs and stuff on there, it's just going to be ridiculous to try to get them in. So we want to really be uh, careful about how far up the hook we go. So right about there is where I'm going to go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some, some lead wire and I'm going to cut it off. And, and I'm going to cut off what I think is about the right length. And you'll see what I'm, what I'm doing here in a second. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm, trying, to, uh, I'm trying to build up a more of a, a, a oval, um, an oval pattern to the body here. So, uh, so I'm, I'm laying the lead wire. I'm not lap, wrapping the lead wire around, actually. I'm laying it on the side of the hook, just like that right there. And I'll lay one on one side, and I'll lay one on the other side, just like I did the bias. And I'm going to try to keep this as straight as I can. Now, the reason that I'm doing this is because I fish Tucker's Crossing over in um, uh, Missoula, Montana, one time. And, and I, before I went, I knew I was going to need to stoneflies, so I, I tied up a bunch of stoneflies. And I, I just wrapped the, the lead around the hook, just like I'm doing with my thread right here. Well, the problem was that I ran into so much weight on the fly that I was actually I was actually whipping my flies off because there was so much weight on the fly so uh, that's another thing that I'm trying to be careful of right here is not putting too much weight on the fly so that I end up whipping my fly off when I'm out there casting it around so I'm trying to get just the right amount of lead here and I think I have it and I'll just wrap that on Now, every time I wrap anything on, when I start with my base wrap, I always start with a really heavy base wrap. And the reason I do that, if some of you guys have watched my other videos, the reason I do that is to keep stuff from spinning around. I don't want, it, I don't want stuff moving around on the hook. And if you don't lay a good base wrap down, then what's going to happen is, is your material is actually going to want to spin around the hook. And, and so the thread actually if you lay a nice foundation down it will keep it from doing that so that's kind of what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm building up a really nice a nice base wrap and, and I'm wrapping my I'm wrapping my lead into this and uh, okay so now I've got the lead in there I've got it where I want it so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cover this lead up all the way up and I'm gonna get a really nice thick wrap and I'm, I'm really kind of going down kind of kind of hard on this here uh, to try to get it to lay down. So I'm going to just cover this whole thing up here. Okay, now that I have it covered up, another thing that I'm going to do, and I don't really see a lot of guys doing this, is I'm going to take my needle nose pliers here and I'm just going to crush that lead in the back there. I'm going to smash it and kind of form it to the way that I want. Uh, you have to be real careful of the goose bites so that you don't ruin them, but I'm just kind of crushing that lead right down in there and then I'm going to come up on the top here and I'm going to make sure again that it's nice and flat and uh, and that's just kind of something right there guys that I just kind of taught myself that I didn't really learn that technique from anybody I, I just it's just something that I kind of taught myself right there okay so now that I have that thread that the lead on there like that there's a nice foundation with the lead on the back side of the hook uh, and the bites, and you can see how they really kind of splay out really nicely there. Now at this point what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to take my hardest hole and this is something that we always uh, we also sell in our fly shop in Winter's Hope Fly and River on eBay. We sell hardest hull and we sell a lot of this stuff. Uh, for some reason we, car we also carry the Loon hardest, uh, hard head cement but the hardest hole seems to be our biggest seller. People like it. They use it a lot. And, uh, and and so that's the one that we usually sell. Now I'm just going to kind of wrap around in this here and kind of mash it down into the thread. And what that does is it makes sure that nothing on the abdomen of this fly is going to go anywhere. So now what I'll do is I'll just kind of uh, 
I'll just kind of dab this in here to kind of speed up the process a little bit here. It doesn't really matter. And, uh, so, you know, some guys might comment, well, you know, the fish are going to smell the glue and blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know what? The fish are not going to smell the glue, guys. It's in the water. It's, it's, it's already cured. They're not going to smell it. So uh, don't worry about that. Okay, so now you can see that I have a nice uh, little foundation laid down there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my uh, my latex body stretch and I've already cut a little um, um, angle cut on it to get it to lay down really nice. You, you'll see this technique with, with a lot of the other guys. Uh, they'll do this. What they'll do is they'll take the end of the latex and they'll cut it to a to like a point and and that's so that you can tie it in perfectly right down to the end. So if you can see that right there, I've cut it to a point and I'm just going to go down and I'm going to start laying this right down in there. So I'm going to go to the very back and I'm going to tie it in right by that very tip there. And once you get it in with the tip, you can, you can pretty much put the pressure on and it. it's not going to go anywhere on you. Okay, so I've got that tied in. Now I'm going to come around here with this and I'm just going to start laying that latex around there. And, and it is going to go around uh, uh, the, the bites there. You just have to be careful not to bring those bites together. So just wrap that around the end down there. Saw a lady tying. Uh, I watched another video last night because I like to watch the other tires as well. And um, um, I'm not too proud. Uh, I like to see what other people are doing. And she said, "I'm a very picky tire." And uh, I had to laugh because I'm a very picky tire as well. If it's not right, uh, I'll, I'll take it off, just like I've just done right there, and just keep redoing it and keep going at it until I until I get it absolutely perfect. Um, when I go out and, and fish my flies, guys, I, I usually have uh, a lot of success um, with the flies. N not, not so much always catching fish, but I have success with the fly because it stays together. Because I know when I take the extra steps and I do things uh, just right, and I spend that time to get it just right, they're going to hold together, they're going to look good. Um, you know, and, and that's what you really want. Ultimately, you really want a nice looking fly, but you want that fly to hold together and be sturdy out there because, by gosh, if you got fish out there like I did at Tucker's Crossing that one day, there was a fish hitting my stone fly. Almost every time I casted it out there, that fish was trying to hit on it. And I knew, and it was right down in this brush, and it was clear across the stream, too. And, uh, I, I kept casting out there and casting out there and sometimes you'll get into the branches and the rocks and stuff and, and it, it's a real bad thing to be casting your line out there and then all of a sudden you know your fly is just all hacked up from everything especially if the fish starts getting into it so uh, the, the stone flies out there were just all over the rocks I could tell what was going on because I saw all the casings and stuff so those things were just emerging like crazy out there and, and they were hanging out and they, they came out and perched themselves on the rocks and then they flew away and I could actually see them flying around stuff too. So I, I knew the stone flies were out and, uh, and that's why I was fishing them. But I, I also did a little research before I went over uh, to the Bitterroot River and, and I found that that was one of the biggest things over there was the stone fly hatch that was going on. And so I made sure that before I left I I tied up a bunch of stone flies and, uh, and, and I, even, I even bought some over there uh, uh, because I, you know, sometimes I get, a little, uh, um, I get a little unconfident about my own flies. Uh, there we go, we're getting sales on Ebays, guys. That's the kind of stuff I try to edit out, but 
hey, I'm proud of that, so uh, I'll go ahead and let those rings uh, happen. So that's Winter's Hope Flying River right there making a sale. So anyway, so, okay, so as you can see, uh, th this is why I edit the, the videos down because it does take quite a long time there uh, for this stuff to happen. So anyways, so there's the abdomen. I, I like that. I'm going to go ahead and be good with that and cut that off right there. And a lot of you guys are going, oh, no, no, don't cut that off. Well, I want it out of my way, and it really doesn't matter. So uh, I want that out of my way, and I want these goose bites here to splay back out. So I'm going to pull that back up. I'm going to pull these out a little bit here and try to get them to, to splay back out a little bit here. Okay, so you just work with those right there, and that, that right there, guys, is about all the farther that those things stick out on the real fly. And I can, I can move this around, I can move that rubber around, and it's not going anywhere. It's, uh, and, and that's also because of the glue that I've put in there. Okay, so now here's one of the really cool tricks that I want to show you guys today. So here's what I do. I grab the tip with the needle nose pliers. I grab it just like this. So I have it in there like that. Now what I do is I try to make a loop and I try to send that tip up through that loop. So I bring the loop up like that. Just like that. I don't know if you can see this. I'll get it right down by the hook here. Okay, so I, so I grab it. I make a loop over the top of the needle nose pliers and then I try to shove the needle nose pliers up through that hole. So I just kind of hold this with my finger and it's a bit tricky. You do it a few times, you'll get it. And you get that loop right over the top, just like that, of the needle nose pliers. You go ahead and pull it tight. Let go of the legs. Pull them through. And you can do this for grasshoppers, too. That's a great technique right there, guys. And that's that's how you make a leg for a fly right there. And it looks pretty realistic. Now when we get done, um, it looks kind of gangly right there, but don't worry about that. So we're going to go ahead and tie that in. And you have to work with that a little bit to get it just right. Okay, that's not bad right there. Now, as I said, I have this other one here, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. I'm going to tie it in about the same distance as I did the other one to the joint. You can see where the joints were, and I'll, I'll tilt my vise so you can see that real good here in a second. Okay, so that's the legs right there. I don't know if you can see that, but that's how I do my legs right there. I'm going to just go ahead and I'm just going to kind of secure these legs down a little bit here. I don't want to go too heavy on it because I'm going to put some dubbing over the top of them. Okay, I'll go ahead and snip that extra out of there and I'll start laying some dubbing down on here. But first, now we're going to come back with our wing casing. So we're going to tie our wing casing in right over the top of the legs. Just like so. Now I'll start taking some dubbing and putting some dubbing on there. Just a little bit will do you. You don't need a whole lot right here guys. Again, I'm going to use that dubbing loop because I like the dubbing loop because it really secures that stuff in there. Get the thread out of the way, come back with the dubbing loop tool, spin it up, and lay some dubbing on there. 
If I need more, not a problem. I'll spin more up and I'll put more on there. But what I don't want to do is I don't want to start out with a big fat mess of dubbing on there because then it just becomes overkill and you got too much on there. Okay, now that I have the dubbing on there, I'll go ahead and tie that off. Okay, and then I'm going to come back over with the wing casing. But what I want to do is I want to make it like a real wing casing, so I have to lay this down, kind of like that, and come over the top. I have to pinch that down just like that then what I do is I, I, when I got it all laid down like that I just come back with my thumb leave it right up on top and then what I do is I take my thread and I go right over the top of that and lock that down in Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to take the latex, I'm not going to cut it out this time, I'm just going to leave it in there. And I'm going to take another pheasant tail, four sprigs off of there, and I'm going to do those legs again, I'm going I'm to make them again. And you'll notice how my legs there, my first set of legs are not the same length. Don't worry about that. We're going to trim them up. We're going to make them the same length, so no big deal. So again, what I do is I just take that, make a loop. Uh, one of my sprigs broke. Doesn't matter. I'll keep going here. It just makes such sweet legs every time. Let's do it again. Let's tie these in there. I'll make another set here in a second. Trim that off, get another set. Now this little leg thing here guys, you don't really have to do this. Uh, you don't. You, there's many different ways. You can tie the rubber legs in there if you want. Um, this is just how I do it. I, I like it because I think the legs look really good this way. And, but there's no, there's no written rule that says that this is actually the way you have to build your legs. It's just, you know, it's just the way I do it. And a, a, lot, of the, a lot of the techniques that I use, I, I only use them because that's the way I learned how to do it. And, you know, you guys might learn different ways of doing things. And, and I'm, I'm all for, you know, different ideas and different approaches to the flies. Um, you guys out there watching, you, 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 you uh, more professional tires, you'll be watching me saying, well, why didn't you do it this way? Well, that's because, uh, you know, I learned a certain method, and, um, and, and that's just the way I do it. Okay, so there's another set of legs, and, and again, these things work really good for your hopper patterns, too, so... Uh, when, when you're tying these legs up, be aware that you know you can use these this little trick, this little technique for your legs. You can use it on on other stuff too. Uh, it's not limited just to, to just the stone flies. Okay. 
Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and dub a little more on there. And I'm going to go just really light on the dubbing again. I don't need a lot of dubbing. And what I mean by I don't need a lot of dubbing is, I mean, that's all I'm using right there. Just a little tiny puff of that stuff. And because if, because if I need more, I can go ahead and get more. Um, but I just don't want a big fat mess of, of dubbing on there because it just makes it harder to work with. And you end up taking it off or, and, and you can't really, it just makes it harder to deal with because you've got so much on there. And, and the tendency is to always want to put more on there, and I, and I just don't. So, again, with the dubbing loop tool, I'll spin that up. And actually what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to go right behind those legs because they're not quite sitting there. And, and that's another thing about these flies, guys, is that you have to kind of adapt and adjust to what you need to do. So I'm going to go behind this set of legs here to get them to come forward a little bit more. And it's a kind of a tricky thing to do. It takes a little bit of time, but uh, it's time well spent. So I'm going to go right behind this set of legs here. Okay, so so that really helps bring those legs forward right there. That's what I want. Now I can go ahead and go in front of them and uh, get some more dubbing on there. Okay, now I can go ahead and tie that off. Okay, now we're going to come back with the second wing casing, this one right here. We're going to do the same thing as we did the first time. Just go ahead and lay your scissors in there and don't pull this thing tight. Just kind of pull it enough to get some tension on it. Bring it forward and make sure that it's forward a little more than the other one so it's not laying directly over the top of the other one and covering it. You got to have two of them and you'll see what I mean as soon as I let go of this and tie this in. You'll see exactly what I mean. Not enough laying too far back so I gotta bring it forward a little more. See what I mean? Gotta play with this stuff a little bit to get it to work right. And once you get it there you come up, pinch and loop method, get right up on top. Seems to work very well. Okay, we're going to lay that back again one more time. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make another set of legs. This really is a tedious part here, but uh, it really does make the fly look really cool, more realistic, and the more realistic your fly looks out there on the water, the more apt the fish are going to be to want to eat it, because it looks exactly like what they're eating. And I've, I've said this before, I'm not down on the worm and bobber guys at all, by no means, because I go out and I steelhead fish, and I sometimes I don't always fly fish when I'm fishing for steelhead. Um, I use eggs and I use uh, plugs and I use various different stuff, so I, I fish different methods. Uh, but, but I know one thing about fly fishing is that the fish, when they go out there and, and look at the fly, they, they, they think it's something that they're eating, that they just got done eating 
a few seconds or even a few minutes ago, so they don't think about it. But but the worm and bobber method, they do. They just they think about it and they stop and they ponder it. And you know if if, if you're out there and and the fish are pondering your bait, well then they have time to react. When you have a fly on there, they don't have any time really to react because they're they're just going to hit it out of instinct. And in most cases, that's what they're doing is they're hitting your fly because because they they're not thinking about it. They're just going ahead and eating it because it's what they it's what they normally do when they see a fly is they eat it. See if I can get this leg on there this time. It's not really wanting to cooperate, so I might have to yet go to a different leg here. Okay, so that was a fail. I'll just snip out a couple more here. Okay, success. It doesn't always work the first time, so you have to keep trying until you get it. One thing that makes a difference here is uh, on these legs, when you're putting them together, there's another leg right there. One thing that makes a difference is, is you really want these long ones. You don't want to go for the shorter ones down here. It just makes it difficult. So when you're getting the legs, cut them out of these long, long parts down here, not, not down here. You want them out of right here. It makes it a lot easier to run them up through the pliers and get them. And, and if you experiment with the plier technique like I'm showing you, you it, it's, maybe it's kind of hard to understand from watching this video. It might be. I, I don't know. I, I've just done it for a while. and But once you do it and then you figure it out, 
you stick the the pliers up through the hole you'll you do it once and then you'll have that aha moment and then you'll understand exactly what I'm talking about and then it, it'll all make sense to you so uh, you know if, if you're not getting the technique just stick with it man you'll, you'll get it. it it's not easy it's not an easy technique by no means it took me a little while to learn how to do it too so um, okay so now uh, another thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and dub this on a little bit of dubbing on the head here and again just a very minute amount here I, I really don't want a lot on here and you can you know one thing about this is you can dub the thread down there and then just slide it up so you don't have to get it right up there and try to try to dub up towards the the top of the of the hook there just just dub it down low and then go ahead and go ahead and uh, slide it up whatever works for you Okay, so I spin that up again. I put one wrap behind those front legs there to kind of get them to come forward a little bit. But then I go immediately in front of them to get them to go back again. You're just trying to shape that right there. And I need a little more behind the legs, so I'm going to go ahead and dub there a little bit more. Just fill in those areas right there. Come up around it with the thread. And I am using tan thread. I could be using black thread. Uh, doesn't really matter. You can use uh, black or tan just as long as you kind of use a neutral color in there. That's what you really want to do. Okay, so now, so now what you want to do is you've got the head on there. You want to bring this forward here. And you want to one more time you want to lay that down on there. So you go ahead and lay that down. Pull your latex up in front of you out of the way. Come around it. Make your head on there. Now that you've got that secured on there, what you do is you just bring it back over it and tie your head off. Cut that right there. So now I have the body of the stone fly here. Just kind of work with that a little bit there. Then I'm going to go back and I'm just going to cut those right there. Cut that top one off. And then I might cut a little V in here.
doing is I'm taking and I'm cutting this rubber here and I'm cutting a V into it and as soon as I'm done I'll turn my vise back around and you can see what I've done here. Okay, so now I've got that done. I'm going to go ahead and finish the head off. I'll keep that right up on top. Let's finish that off. Cut it. Okay, now as I said, I have a bunch of gangly legs here. We need to fix those. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go in and we're just going to start preening those up. Cut them to length here. Take our glue here, drop a little bit of glue on them. All you got to do is get your fingers down in there and just stroke the feathers and that glue will set the barbules together. From there you just got to take your scissors and try to fix these things to get them to lay right. And once you do, that's what you're left with right there. A little more glue on that one there to get it to stick together. So you can see firsthand, whoops, got some on the table. And again, just kind of stroke those lightly together to get them to stick together. Okay, so, so there's my stone fly right there. Um, let's go ahead and cut the top here. Get it to lay down a little bit. Okay.
So there it is, guys. There's the stone fly right there, how I tie it. And uh, you guys might have a lot of different variations on that, but that's what I do right there. It's, uh, it resembles a stone fly. Uh, it has the wing casings on it. It's got nice looking little legs on it. And uh, that's how I tie it right there. I probably could have tied it a little better, but uh, I had to uh, do it on the fly for the camera here. And again, for um, um, Sean out there who uh, wanted to see everything I do, that's it right there. Guys, Winter's Hope Flying River on eBay, that's our store. We have a lot of cool stuff in our store. We just came out with a brand new line of ram's wool that we make ourselves. Um, check that out. It has a really nice uh, flotational quality to it, and it's something that you can't buy, but we have it. So uh, be sure and check that out. Also, the boar hair, which I was going to tie for the, for the antennas in here that I kind of skipped out on that one. Uh, we also have that, so uh, check that out. We have a lot of really cool products in our store. And uh, thanks to everybody who watches my videos. I really appreciate it.